Is Kir Mayarid abusing his powers? Or are parliaments not doing their job? How, how are all these law being passed? How are they going through the parliament? Continent Text 211 Educating the youths through films um, Before I start the show, first of all, I'd like to welcome all of you. Um, this is a very important and sensitive sort of show. So please, if you have a chance, share this with all of your colleagues and your friends as well, and all of the intellectuals of South Sudan, because this, this is pretty much going to be based on facts. It's not going to be based on opinions. So um, as South Sudanese, we have duty. We have duty to ensure that things are running smoothly in our country. We have duty to question a lot of things. So for today, today's show is mainly targeting uh, the structure of the government of South Sudan. So please, if you have um, friends that are just doing nothing at the moment and you would want them to uh, join us, um, I'd be more than happy for you to do that. Thank you. Okay, to start our show, um, um, to start our show, Today's show is going to mainly focus on the transitional um, constitution of South Sudan, 2011. As we all know, the constitution is quite broad. It, it's really big and there's no way um, I'll be able to cover all the different chapters that are, um, that are embedded within the constitution. So what I'll do today, I'll focus on a few chapters, but my, my focus will be around... Um, the government, the structure of government and the composition of government as well and its and its functions. So please bear with me. As we all know, uh, we just got our country and it has been a, a rocky ride, I can say. Um, life, lives have been lost, there's been insecurity and we're trying to find peace and we're trying to find different ways to govern ourselves. So, like I said at the start before, this show is probably going to be one of the most difficult shows for me to make. Um, it's very sensitive and it will touch a lot of areas that a lot of people may not be happy with. And as you've seen um, from uh, the, the subject, I, I really want to explore um, whether or not Kirmaya did is abusing his powers or the members of parliament are failing the people of South Sudan. So before I start, please bear in mind, because I know there will be people that will try to criticise me and say, who are you and why are you talking about the constitution of South Sudan? So let me just say something to you. How did we get our freedom? The people that are living outside of country had that choice to vote during referendum. We all had choices. People living outside of the country. And some of you may question, why are you so concerned? You're not living in the country. Why are you even bothered? Well, 99% of my relatives and family members live in South Sudan. And if there's insecurity in the country, if a lot of things are not going right, it affects all of us. It affects me. It affects everyone, every single one of you that is watching today. So I'm going to start. So please share this video with all of your friends. And this video is targeting mainly um, the government, the government bodies, whether it's opposition, whether it's the government of South Sudan, and it, its officials as well. I will begin my show now. Um, this is recorded anyways. So people that are sleeping or people that are at work or at churches, you will have a chance to listen to this uh, from the uh, very beginning. As we all know, the president came out about a month ago or so to inform us that um, they are in the process of drafting 
the permanent constitution. At the moment, the constitution that is governing us or that we're using is the transitional constitution of the Republic of South Sudan, 2011. I'm just going to go through the preamble for you so that you can understand why, as an individual, I, I take this very seriously. So in the preamble of uh, the constitution, it acknowledges that South Sudanese struggle to achieve freedom, equality, and management okay, of our resources. Now, if you have the constitution of South Sudan, um, please, if you read the preamble, it, it goes more in depth. This was just a brief summary of what the constitution reminds us of. Uh, freedom equality there was a lot of political injustices and marginalization. Our voices were not being represented, as you all know. Jurachi olue pai stay mar tien ko ingi tongarvi. So now chung ni mja deng panda. A week ko kuburu ja chopping kuburu ni maja dik. We need to learn how to govern ourselves uh, appropriately. So the reason why I'm really, really focusing on the constitution today is because ada ko wuna getting in this constitution. I'll keep on switching between English and, and Dinka so that uh, at least people can understand what I'm saying. So what I'm saying is today I will be giving an analysis okay, about things within the constitution that I believe to create problem. And these Problems should not proceed to the permanent constitution because we can transition of this. But the permanent constitution is what is going to be governing us for the generations. So I'm not here to criticize Kirmayadid as the president. I'm not here to criticize him. However, I will use him as a reference so that you can understand what exactly is wrong with this constitution and the reason why we need to rectify and amend some of these things because it gives too much power. So please bear with me, okay? As we all know, South Sudan was fighting for freedom. <laughs> We need to learn how to govern ourselves in a way that is transparent and in a way that equality is present. To all of you that may not know me, my name is Apuk Jel Maron. I am a South Sudanese uh, citizen by birth. And I consider myself as a law defender by nature. I am not a lawyer. However, to read a constitution, you don't need to be a lawyer to be able to understand it. Let me just take you to, if you have your constitution, make, get it ready for me. So do you, let me just have a look at the duties of citizen. What is your duty? Okay, you're a citizen of South Sudan. Whether you're living there or you are a citizen by birth. Under Article 46, Article 46, um, sub Article 1, this is what it says. It shall be the duty of every citizen to uphold, defend, and abide by this constitution and respect the laws of South Sudan. Every citizen shall, in particular, A, defend the country and respond to the call for national service in accordance with the provisions of this constitution and the law. Prevent 
and combat corruption and sabotage. So this is my duty as a citizen by birth. Participate in the development of South Sudan. Promote democracy, good governance, and the rule of law. K, respect the rights and freedom of others. So as you can see here, I am protected by the constitution. You are protected by the constitution. Engwe constitution, engwe elwel. E constitution, e elwel, e yin ke yeran, e lazim. But in the nom, in the nom right, ko ba jam, a bad ko wun, ba ba e gwer. Na de ko wun, wich ba ba e right, ke yin ya in the nom ye, ko ba jam, a bad ke right ba e. It's your duty as a citizen. So every time when people complain and say that the government is doing this, government is doing, what are you doing as a person? What are you doing? What is your duty as a citizen? Why are you scared not to uphold the law of the constitution? Promote democracy. So before you attack me and say, who are you to talk about the issues of our country? I would like to say, I would like to say this, okay? I am protected by the constitution and it is my every right to talk about what I believe to be the right thing in terms of the develop, development of the country. Today's video is going to focus on separation of power. Separation of power. Why is separation of power important and why should separation of power be respected at all levels of government or government bodies? Why is it important? So why, why should a national government, why should they respect separation of power? Why should we have a national government? Why should we have a state government? And why should we have a local government in a country? Why is it essential to have each level functioning independently and interdependently to maintain the running of the affairs of our country? This is a question that I'm leaving for you, South Sudanese. It's a question that I'm leaving for you to ask yourself. Why is it important? You live in different countries. You can see different jurisdictions and how they run their country. South Sudan is not different. As we all know, South Sudan is governed by a decentralized system of government. The word decentralized, what does it mean? It means di dividing or division or power between the national, the state and local government. Division of power. This simply means that the state government is supposed to be independent from executive control. Which is Kirmayadid. As we all know, as we all know, governors are being appointed by the president, which is a part of executive. I will go through and dissect at the moment. I will go and um, dissect it in a second. Garquath, uh, it is decentralized. That's what it says in the constitution. I'm not making this up. If you want to go and look it up, look it up. Decentralized system of government, that is what we're using in the transitional govern, uh, government, I mean, transitional constitution. Okay, So South Sudan is governed by that. So if President Kiir is given powers, as it has been given under 101, Article 101, which is the function of the president. So when you go through the constitution, there's Article 101, and it outlines the functions of the president, Angola B. President Loy, it outlines the functions. And if you go to that constitution, 101, sub article R, 
and some article S. This is what it says. I'm just giving you just an overview and I'll go in depth to outline where we are going wrong at the moment as a country. Okay. So if President Kim Edit is given powers as it is as it has been given under 101, which is a function of the president, sub article R, and as to appoint and sack governors, okay, what power are we giving? What power are we giving the state then? This actually means that the state cannot function independently. Because if the president, which is an executive, is appointing governors, the governors will work on their interests, on his interests. Because the president currently is what? He, he's the head of SPLM and he's the president of South Sudan. And if he's appointing and sacking governors as he pleases, this, this, this is not right. And I'll, I'll point, I'm not, this is not my opinion. It's in the article. So, what does this really do to governors? It gives them limitations to function or perform duties at the, uh, as the constitution pres prescribes. Because in the cons constitution, the role of governors, the role of governors of state is outlined. And if they're being appointed, their role is being limited. Okay, so under Article 47, South Sudan have a decentralized system of government with the following levels. So we have three levels of government. So we have the national level, which exercises authority in respect of the people and the state. This is, I quote, straight from the constitution. Sub Article B, this is 47, by the way, Article 47, Sub Article B, the, the state government, which exercises authority within a state and render public services through the level closest to the people, and a local government within the state, which is closest level to the people. So Article 47 gives us the three level of government. So you have the state government, you have the, I mean, you have the national government, the state government and then you have the local government which is good it's good to see now if we go to article 48 it talks of devolution of powers so what is devolution of powers devolution of power is the division of power from national or central or federal government between the state and local or subnational levels of government so Article 47 talks of devolutions of power. So this is transfer of power from the national level to the state and then to the local government as well. These are some of the principles that are outlined within um, Article 48. So the following principles shall guide the devolution and exercise of power. So what does this really mean? Sub article, so article 48, sub article A, affirmation of the need for norms and standard of governments and administration at the state and local government levels that reflect the unity of the people of South Sudan while recognizing their diversity. Sub article B, acknowledgement of the roles of the national government and the states in the promotion of welfare of the people and protection of their human rights and fundamental freedoms. Article 48, sub-article C, recognition of the need for the involvement and participation of all people of South Sudan at all levels of government as expression of unity and pursuit of good governance through democracy, separation of powers, transparency, accountability, and respect for the rule of law to enhance peace, socioeconomic uh, development, and political stability. This is Article 48. This is what the Constitution say. This is not what I am saying as a poop. The Constitution recognises the separation of power, giving the power to state and local government. Okay? So that is 48, sub-Article 1, 
and then it has A, B, C, D, and then it goes on. Now, this is what it says about the national government. The national government shall exercise its comp competencies in accordance with this constitution and the law. So this, the national government is basically the big government in Juba. You can say it like that. Okay, And respect the powers devolved to the state and local government. The national government shall allow the states and the local government to operate independently. So why is President Kirmayadi appointing... Governors, if the constitution is saying that the national government shall respect the powers devolved to the states and local government, the national government shall allow the states and the local government to operate independently. Where is the interference coming from? Why is he interfering with the rights of the state and the local government? I'm going to go straight to it because more is coming. I'm just asked, I'm just putting these questions out there. So in South Sudan, we have three levels of government. So we have the national, state, and local government. Now, let's try to explore, okay, the organs of the national government. So let's just leave state government aside for now. Let's talk about the organs of the national government. So... Under Article 51 of the Constitution of South Sudan, the national government have the following organs. So, Article 51, if you want to go and follow it and read it, the national government have the following organs. So, A, the legislature. So, this is the parliament of South Sudan. The executive and the judiciary. I am going to give uh, a brief highlight or overview of the functions of the three levels of the, of, of the organs of government. Okay, so we have the legislature, uh, which is the parliament. What is the role of the parliament? What is their role exactly? What's their function? So first, they make the law. Second, they amend the law if changes are required. They also approve um, the budget. Okay, So, for example, if roads need to be built or hospitals or schools or whatever, the budget has to be approved by the parliament um, to go to the appropriate states. So what is the composition of the parliament? So we have the National Legis um, Legislative Assembly and we have the Council of States. And I'll, I'll continue in a second to explain where where things are not going right in the country and why one person feels like they have the power to dictate everything. Okay, so we have the parliament and then we have the executive. Okay, so executive, what do they do? What is their function? What is their role? It's to carry out or implement the law. So what is it composed of? So the executive comprises of the president, which is Kirmayadi. The vice presidents, as we all know, we have almost like five vice presidents in South Sudan. And the cabinet and, and ministers as well. So the president is the head of the executive and he's the president of South Sudan. Okay, so he's the, he's the head of the ruling party, which is SPLN. They are supposed to be elected by the people. I'm not going to go into how Kirmiyadi came into power because majority of you already know and i know that a lot of you know okay the structure and comp composition of the government of south sudan but i just i just felt the need to sort of like revisit it again okay so usually ministers and sec um, secretaries are selected by the president and have to go through the parliament the parliament has to approve these people it's not just a random thing you can't just come and say oh i want to pick this person appoint this person to be minister of health no. Yes, the executive has the right to pick these ministers. However, they have to go through betting through the parliament. So parliament is very important. They have a very important role to play here. And that's why I'm asking this question. Is Kir Mayadid abusing his powers? Or are parliaments not doing their job? How, how are all these laws being passed? How are they going through the parliament? 
Let's continue. All right. So we have um, legislature. We have the executive, which is president himself and his um, office. And then we have judiciary. So what is the role of judiciary? They interpret and apply the law. Okay, so the judi judiciary is made of the Supreme Court of South Sudan, which is the highest court of South Sudan, which is headed by Chief, of, uh, Chief Justice. The Chief Justice, which is the president of the Supreme Court, is appointed by the executive, which is the president. So once the position, for example, is declared as vacant, the president forwards the name again to the parliament so that they can make a recommendation. So it's not a matter of the president just picking the um, you know, chief justice and saying, this is the person that I want. No, again, they have to go through the parliament. All right. So these are the three organs of government, legislature, executive, and judiciary. Now, there is interconnection and interdependence between three branches of the national government. So again, legislature, executive, and judiciary. So what is the link here? If you go under Article 40, 49, sub-Article 1, okay, in the administration of the decentralized system of government, of, of, I mean, of, yeah, of governance, the following principles of intergovernmental linkages shall be observed. So A, the linkage between the national and the local government shall be through the government of the relevant state, okay? B, in their, um, in their relationship with each other or with other government organs, all levels of government shall observe the following. So I respect each other's powers and competencies and collaborate in the task of governing and assist each other in fulfilling their respective constitution and obligations. So I feel like the constitution is really, really doing well in outlining this. But again, there are some weaknesses within the constitution as well that we, I need to bring your attention to. Because as we're moving into drafting the permanent constitution of South Sudan, we don't want the same mistake to repeat itself. As we all know, constitution is what governs every country. Constitution is very important. And if there are injustices within the constitution, and then the constitution need to be rectified and need to be amended. And these three level of national government are very important. The parliament in particular is, is the one that makes and amends the law. The parliament is what makes the law. So how is Kir appointing all these governors? How is Kir appointing the head of judiciary? How is Kir the one appointing everyone? Who is giving him that power? It's embedded in this constitution, people. And I'll explain it to you in a moment. And the reason why I feel like it needs to be changed. There's no way this has to go on to... It's not even about Kir today. It's about the future. Kir is not going to be the president forever. We will have other people coming into power and leading us. And these people need to be held accountable. And how do we do that? It's through constitution. Okay? So that's why I'm going... I took my time to really look at this constitution very well. So let's have a look at um, the establishment and com composition of the national legislature, which is the parliament, and why parliament is very important. So let's have a look at the composition of parliament of South Sudan. So under Article 54, there shall be established a national legislature composed of the following. A, the National um, Legislative Assembly which is composed of the members of parliament. And then we have the council of states. So if you live in Australia, this is equivalent to senators. And usually the council of states, they come through the states themselves. The states are the ones that elect their council. Um, I mean, the council of states, the, the representative. Guess what? Guess what, all my people? Kirmayadi, in the constitution, gets to pick 20 members of the Council of States. And the Council of State, by the way, are very powerful. 
when I say powerful, these guys have the audacity to even impeach the president, okay, and even call for votes of no confidence. So they have a big role to play. And so why does Kir Mayadi get to pick 20 members of the council? Again, it's embedded within the constitution, and I'll go through it in a second. So usually, how do you become a member of parliament anyways? Okay, how do you become a member of parliament? So um, in, you're meant to be elected. So usually at a general election, um, your political po you, you campaign through your political parties, and then um, whoever gets the majority vote get to represent um, the people of that state. So that's how you, you get into the parliament. So you are the voice of the people. You are the voice of the people. Yes, I do have the constitution as I am speaking to you right now. And I will show you like what the constitution looks like. So you don't think that I am uh, making up. Okay, I'm not one of those people. I said before, this show is not going to be based on um, opinions. It's going to be based on facts. So that right there is... The Constitution of South Sudan, 2011. As you can see, uh, it, it's a very long constitution. Very, very long. So I'm referring to it as I'm going. And like I said before, um, I am not going to go through all of the constitution. It's too big. It's too broad. I will try to cut it down to just the function of precedent and also like having a look at the structure of the government of South Sudan. So that's the reason why. Anyways, let me go back to um, what I was just talking about. Like, yes, so members of parliaments usually are not meant, okay, to be appointed. They're not meant to be appointed at all. Members of parliament, okay, are supposed to <laughs> be elected. They're supposed to be elected by the people. Have we had any elections so far in South Sudan? No. We have not, unfortunately. But this is very important. Okay? So let's just go up to where I was up to. Okay, so like I said before, members of parliament are supposed to be um, elected by the people to represent them because these are our voice these are the people that are going to make the law and pass them into a bill of rights they amend the law as well and we get to decide who is going to be our member of parliament unfortunately if you look at uh the way things are going in south sudan right now i know we're trying to use war as an excuse let's say for example all these members of parliaments that just came through um recently where are they coming from? Through political parties. Where in the world does that happen? They're coming through political parties. And so what are they going to do? They're going to represent the interests of their political party, not the interests of the people of South Sudan. Give the power to the people. This is a reason why there's no competition in terms of leadership. When we have almost 500 MPs, and we have only 10 states. Where are they coming from? Which constituency are they representing? Who are they representing, these members of parliament? They're supposed to be elected. And this is exactly what the, uh, the constitution is supposed to, to, to say. Members of parliament are elected by their people because they are our voice. We get to speak through them. They don't speak for us. We speak for them. So where are these members of parliament coming from through their political parties is that right do i want someone that was coming through a political party to represent me who are they representing do they know what our needs are as a people have they been to the villages to see what the struggle is of course not what are we doing south sudanese you need to wake up we need to educate our population. And this constitution needs to be amended and rectified. Okay. Now, when it comes to, um, so like I said before, so you have the, um, the members of parliament, because parliament is divided into two, there's upper house and there's the lower house. Okay. 
So you have the Legislative Council. So usually how do they become... Um, how, 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 these are the most powerful people, like I said before, they can impeach the president. They can do so many things and hold people accountable. Let's say, for example, if a minister is being corrupt, if they were to go and, um, you know, build roads and stuff, and unfortunately they did not build the road, it is, it, it's, it's up to the, the, the members of parliament and the, the national, um, I mean, the, the legislative council to, to, to issue a statement so that these ministers can... Um, you know, explain themselves. Who's holding these ministers accountable at the moment? And that's the reason why corruption is, is skyrocketing in South Sudan. Because the members of parliaments are not doing their job. Because members of parliaments are being appointed. And if you're being appointed, you will represent, okay? If you're being appointed, what is happening here? You're going to represent the interests of your political party. Because if you don't, you'll be afraid. Because next minute, what's going to happen? They'll get rid of you and pick someone else. So everyone is like each man to their own. They're scared. Their hands are held back. And who's doing that? Let's find out. All right. So usually what, uh, what happens is, I know that members of parliament go through election. However, um, the, the, the council, the legislative council, they go through something called, um, they're elected, they are elected on uh, a prof proportional basis across the state. So, for example, um, a party winning around 10% of votes or 20% of vote at an election, um, consecutive election, can expect to have 10% of, of seats in the council. That's how it usually works. However, in South Sudan, they are appointed. Okay? So, the National um, Legislative Council, like I said before, they have a powerful role of oversighting all of the organs of the government. So the judiciary, the executive, they, they, it's under their control. For example, okay, if ministers or governors, if they fail to act accordingly or have been accused of misconduct, they would have to go through the members of parliament, you know, to be cross-checked. So they have a really important role. However, under Article 40. Uh, 58, sub-article B. Guess what happens? Let me read it for you, my people. <laughs> this is really sad. Kirmayadid gets to appoint. Okay? So the Council of State shall consist of this. This is what's happening under Article 58. A. All South Sudanese who were representative in the Council of States of the Republic of Sudan by virtue of their membership in that council. At the moment... We are what? We are an independent country. So if we were to draft the new constitution, I need this to be changed. It needs to be amended. The people of South Sudan need to amend this. It's very important. Because why should people that were representing us in Sudan back in the days have to continue by virtue of their membership to straight away go into... Uh, um, into the, the Council of States. It's wrong. And it needs to be rectified. Because right now, we are a country. And we don't need anyone that was representing us in Sudan. To, they need to go back and do their mandate. Join other political parties or form their own political party and come through people. They have to come through people. They can't just be like, oh, by the virtue of the membership in that council, and then automatically they become. Okay. I didn't read it wrong. This is what it says. Under the Council of States, okay, the Council of State shall consist of this. My people, I'm not reading it wrong. All South Sudanese who were representative in the Council of State of the Republic of Sudan by virtue of the membership in that council. We need people to be elected. B, 20 representative appointed by the president. So like I said before, the council of state, they are the most important people. Okay? In order for anything to be passed, we need two-thirds okay, of their vote in, in order for things to be amended or changed. So if you have A, people that are coming from Sudan, okay? And then B, you have 20 representatives appointed 
by the president. And then who are they representing? Who are they representing? They're not coming through us. They're not coming through people. And like I said before, in any country, in any country, the members of the Council of States come through the state. It is the state that gets to appoint, okay, that gets to appoint their members of the Council of State to represent them. It's not the role of the president to appoint these people. So keep this in mind. It's wrong. Kirmayadid cannot get to pick and appoint everyone. He cannot be appointing members of parliaments. He cannot be appointing um, the governors. He cannot be appointing. What does this mean? Is he really adhering to the norms and the values of our constitution? Of course not. Because the constitution clearly states the devolution of power. It clearly states that. States should have power and the national government should respect that. Is that being respected? Of course not. The executive is interfering. The executive is overpowering everything and oversighting everything. And what is the parliament doing? The parliament is supposed to keep them in check. It is the role of the parliament to ensure that the executive does not interfere with the powers of the state and the local government. However, because obviously the, the parliament is dominated by people that are appointed by uh, the executive, which is represented by the, pre uh, the president of South Sudan, Kirmayari. That's the reason why all these laws are being passed. And the parliament has no power. They're just there. They're just yes, 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 people. Yes, members of parliament. That's what they are. All they do is just say yes, yes, yes to keep their job. They're not functioning. They're not upholding by the law of the constitution of course not we don't want yes people we want people that will represent our voice we need election to be conducted so that we can elect our president if Kirmayadid becomes the president of South Sudan my respect for him because he was chosen by the people of South Sudan we need the members of parliament to be elected by their state members by the people they have to go through the people not through the executive we need to separate the organs of government. Why is the national government overpowering everyone and making decisions? Why does the executive, why are they in control? Why are they controlling everything? Because majority of them are the ones in the parliament. That's the reason why they're appointed, not elected. This is where we go wrong. We don't want these injustices to continue in the next um, uh, permanent constitution. I'm not saying this because of Kira at the moment, because Kira is not doing anything wrong. He's just someone that is following what the constitution is saying. So who do you blame here? The blame goes everywhere. Check this constitution very carefully. Please, if you have a friend that is in the government, if you have a, a relative that is a member of parliament, I want them to read the constitution. Let them watch this video and let them read the, the, the constitution very carefully. We need the, the, the constitution that is being drafted that is going to govern us for the next up, upcoming years to be a fair and just constitution. A constitution that is being followed. There's one or two things that's happening here. One, it's either the president of the country and its office are not abiding by the constitution. Two, the constitution is also favoring them. In so many ways. In so many ways. So uh, uh, under Article um, 58, sub-Article B, President, which is the head of executive, which is obviously headed by President Kirmayari, appoints 20 members of Council of States. So we don't have a representation. This presents a problem because for any bill of law to pass, it has to meet two-third majority. So because the president obviously appoints these people, they have majority representative in the upper house. Like I said before, there's a lower house and there's an upper house. They have majority representative. And that's the reason why you see things just being slight, things getting slight. And it's not right. 
It's a country, people. And you need to abide by the constitution. However, if something is not right in the constitution, the members of parliaments are meant to amend and change these things. Why is it not happening? Again, like I said before, this is not my opinion. It's a constitution. What is the role of the, um, the national legislature? Where members of parliament want to go, Kwanke, these 500 members of parliament listen to your role very carefully. Because number one, you came through your political parties. You were not elected by the people of South Sudan. You came through political parties. Corruption, sabotage, which is something that I should stand against. This is what the constitution says. I have a right as a citizen, okay, of, by birth of that country, to uphold to this constitution. So these 500 members of parliament that came through in a different way need to be directed so this is the competencies of the national legislature, so the functions of parliament. So 55, Article 55, the national legislature represents the will of the people of South Sudan and shall foster unity and nationhood, exercise legisl um, legis legislative functions, oversee the executive, oversee the executive. Who's the executive? The president, the vice presidents, the ministers, the cabinet, and other bodies of government, and promote decentralized decentral, decentralized system of government so what is your role here with members of parliament you're supposed to be doing what you're supposed to be checking and overseeing the executive however the executive is controlling you so my problem now is one a it's either you are not reading this constitution very carefully or b you are incompetent very incompetent because how do you allow the government, which is the president, Kirma Yadid, to overpower you? The vice presidents, the ministers, the corruption that is skyrocketing in the country. How is that happening? You should be kept in check. So for a lot of you that are blaming Kirma Yadid, check the members of parliament very well. They were not elected by you, and that's the reason why they're not representing your voices. They're representing and protecting their interest. That's what they're doing. Anyways, two, the um, le legislative competences of the national government shall vest in the national legislature um, in respect of all matters assigned in A, C, and D, okay, and also E. Without prejudice, the national government shall be competent to consider and pass amendments in this constitution. So... You, as the members of parliament, we are relying on you now. And this is the reason why I'm taking out time to do this video because the permanent constitution is going to be passed by you and i don't want the injustices okay and contradictions that are in this constitution to go into the next permanent constitution because that's going to be the constitution that is going to guide all of us so listen very carefully you have the right to consider and pass amendments in this constitution you go away members of parliament okay enact legislation on all matters assigned to it by this constitution discuss state statements by the president and take decisions as many as as may be necessary authorize annual allocation of resources and revenue in accordance with um, article 80 87 of this constitution so you're very powerful you have the power if you read this constitution the executive will not overpower you you have, you members of parliament, this is going to you. You're the one that is failing the country. You're the one failing the country because you're allowing the executive to overrule you. The executive is overpowering the parliament. The executive is overpowering the judiciary. The, the, the executive is controlling the people of South Sudan. Elections are not even being allowed. Who is to blame here? You are the one that is failing us. And why are you failing us? Because in the first place, the people of South Sudan never elected you. You were appointed. You were appointed. 
And that's why you're failing. Because if you were elected by the people through your uh, political representations, you, you would have went through competition. You would have been checked, okay, to see whether you have the right cr credentials and qualifications by the people. Very, very important. So I need you, the people of South Sudan, to be very mindful and read this constitution. I will share it with you. If you would want to read it at your own time, please inbox me, send me your email, and I'll share the, this uh, draft constitution. I mean, not draft, obviously. Um, it's, it's a transitional constitution of 2011. If you want to read it, you can read it. Okay? And you can go ahead and, um, yeah. Anyways, let me continue with the function. All right. Perform any other function determined by this constitution. The national legis 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 legislature should exercise its legislative powers through bills in accordan accordance um, with this constitution. So keep this in mind. You have a very powerful role. We don't want yes. We don't want yes members of parliament. We are appointed, appointed, appointed. decree. The governor has been sacked. The governor has been decreed. The governor, who's giving the president the power? Okay. Now, let's have a look at the competence of the Council of State. So the Council of State shall be competent to initiate legislation on decentralized, decentralized system of government and other issues of interest to the state and pass such legislation um, with two-third majority of all representatives. Like I said before, in South Sudan, in the upper house and in the lower house, okay, in the upper house, which is the Council of State, we have 20 members that are appointed by the president. They're not meant to be appointed. They're meant to come through the states, the respective states. However, he gets to appoint them. And then we have representative from Sudan by virtue of membership. So now, this is the reason why they're constantly passing all these law, okay? Issue resolution and dire um, directives that may guide all levels of government in accordance with the provision of Article 47, 48, and 49. So keep this in mind. The Council of State is very powerful. They should not be appointed by the government. These are people that should come through, you know, their, their respective constituency, which is their states. So what is Article 47? Levels of government. Article 48, devolution of powers. So this is separation of power. Article 49, 49 intergovernmental link linkages. All these are supposed to be upheld by the Council of States. It's your competency. Are you doing that? Of course not. So many questions. There's so many why questions. Let me come back to my argument. Why do I take this very seriously? Why do I, why do I um, criticize this? It's because people are not being given the will. People are not being allowed to participate in the affairs of their country. Anyways, why is the executive, which is being led by President Kirmay Adid, overpowering, ignoring separation of power? I went through Article 48 before. Article 48 acknowledges the devolution of power, that the state should be governing themselves. But then again, President Kirmi Adid appoints the governors. Why is he ignoring devolution of power? And that's why I was saying that there was too much contradiction, too much contradiction in this constitution. A lot of um, contradiction. This is my contention. The state need to be independent. 
This will allow the people to choose the right people to lead them. Give people a chance to choose the right leader on the, um, on the basis of their manifesto. This is very important. Give the state the powers to elect their own governors. If your argument is that they're not educated to choose their own leaders, I don't want to believe that's true. Educate them. Everyone should have, everyone should have what? This constitution. From what agreement? Don't get me wrong. I'm not confusing things here. Um, what I am saying is this. Okay? Even prior, okay, even prior to, to this transitional government coming through, these things were already happening. And if we allow it to happen within this constitution, and then it is going to present a problem in the future. So let's not be ignorant of the fact that this is what the constitution outlines and this is what they are trying to act on. There is a term limit for members of parliament. It's every four years. Anyways, so again, my argument is this. So under Article 58, sub Article B, the president appoints the Council of States, which is 20 members. What does this mean, really? The, president, the president's appointee, they tend to preside over governors, which are appointed again by the government. So it's, it's really, it's very, um, it's, it's very messy. Now, let's have a look at the functions of president. What is the function of the president of South Sudan, according to the constitution, which is 101? The president, president shall perform the following functions. A, preserve the security of South Sudan and protects its um, uh, territorial integrity. B, supervise constitutional and executive institution and provide exemplary leadership in public affairs, which is good. C, um, appoint constitutional and judicial post holders in accordance with this constitution and the law. That's right. He's, he's allowed to pick the judiciary. Um, D, preside over the National Council of Ministers. E, declare and terminate a state of emergency in accordance with the provision. I'm not going to go through all of them, but there's, there's one that I really want to bring your attention to. This is apparently a function of the president. R, remove a state governor or dissolve a state legislative assembly in the event of crisis in the state that threatens national security and territorial integrity. Now, if you look at Kir Mayadi, the president, he's using this. And it's not an excuse because not every state in South Sudan, okay, has an incompetent governor. Because if he's appointing them and he's saying they're incompetent, and then this really brings the question, what are you doing? As we all know, some, some, some of these governors don't even stay in power for more than uh, three months. I feel like every, every, every month someone is being changed or every um, six months or every three months as he pleases. And that's not right. It's not right. Uh, okay, sub article, uh, I mean, article 101, sub article S, appoint a state um, caretaker governor who shall prepare for elections within 60 days in the state where the governor has been removed or the state <coughs> um, legislative assembly. So dissolve in accordance with the provisions of this constitution, um, the relevant, I mean, the relevant state constitution and the law and perform any other function as may be prescribed by these. So what the constitution is saying that is, for example, if um, the governor of the state or if any member of parliament is not competent, okay, so the gover um, apparently the president has the right to choose someone to look after this, that state for a particular time. And within 60 days, there has to be an election that has to happen. As we all know right now in South Sudan, governors are constantly being replaced and this process here is not being followed. So for example, if your state governor was removed because he was incompetent or there was a threat or there was an insecurity problem within the country and the government was not acting accordingly um, or abiding by the law, the president is allowed, yes, 
by the rights of the constitution to replace okay however within 60 days there has to be an election that has to happen so what does that mean the people need to elect their governor we're ignoring people we're ignoring the voices of the people of south sudan there's there's a lot of questions that are in mind we need to allow for competition of leadership this is how a country develops this is how a country develops we have our freedom now we have a country we need to structure our government and we need to have a very strong constitution that is being followed by the people by the parliament by the executive by the judiciary by all levels of government very important devolution of powers under article 48 this gives the state the right to govern themselves i've already read article 48 before it gives the state the right to govern the self they are supposed to elect their own governors the problem is why is the head of executive which is led by the president kirmi added controlling the head of the state the governors why is that happening the constitution also recognizes that the governors are to be elected by the state give the power to the state yeah uh, as executive it's not your job the only time you get to step in as a president is when there's an issue which is here the function of president 101 you can appoint a state ca um caretaker governor who shall prefer for elections within 60 days where the governor has been removed or the state legislative assembly is is to be dissolved that's the only time you step in so why are you appointing all these governors why are you disrespecting article 48 devolution of power why because you're not being questioned by the members of parliament because the members of parliament you're the one appointing them chagating this is something that is very very interesting so please my people i'm not doing this like i said before constitution changes and who makes the constitution it's it, it comes through the people it is the the parliament that makes okay that makes the law it is the executive that gets to do what and act the law and the judiciary to interpret the law so we have different functions we have a structure in place it's just that people are not abiding by the constitution i understand that the current um conflict is being used as an excuse and that's the reason why we are again appointing members of parliament who are these members of parliament going to represent kere i've already went through the functions who are they representing their political parties so what does that mean if they don't act accordingly to the interests of their political parties they will be replaced and the the voices of the people are not being represented so if the executive of the, of the country needs to do the right thing we need to have freedom of speech you need to allow the people to elect their members of parliament let's avoid all this whoever that is running this transitional government should they they're, they're laughing at us they know that the people of south sudan do not even read their own constitution you have a duty you have a duty to uphold it's not only just the member of parliament that is actually failing us the people of south sudan are not also doing their job because they're afraid this tactic that is being used or people being intimidated people cannot speak up that's not the freedom that we wanted that's not what millions of south sudanese died for we lost so many mothers, so many aunties, so many grandparents, so many uncles to this war to have freedom. Why is it that our freedom is not being upheld? Why are we being oppressed in our own country? Why are we being oppressed by our own people? John Kudis, John Kuduso, what John Kuduse, he said it clearly in his song. That it is you wake me the by wake by guirka wake by right it's you the people of the country that can fix the country or ruin the country 
Stop following wrong politicians. If we allow room for election right now, trust me, a lot of these political... My objective was to ensure that the permanent constitution of South Sudan does not carry forward the injustices that are built and embedded within the transitional government of South Sudan 2011. That's the objective of this show. We want the contradictions within the constitution, the transitional constitution, to be rectified and amended in the process of drafting the new permanent constitution of South Sudan. This is very important. We need to be able to reflect and respect separation of power. Give people the power to participate in, in, in electing or in the election of their governors and their politicians. This is very important. Give people a chance to elect their president. The current members of parliament are failing us. They're failing the people of South Sudan. They're not doing their job. Because if they were doing their job right, if they understood their job requirement, these should not be happening. So what am I doing here? I'm going to allow now in this second video um, a chance for people to, to say their opinion or add their opinion. The current member of the parliament, I mean the current members of the parliament, as we all know, the 500, they came through political parties rather than through people. So let's just keep that in mind um, that people, people, be a leader of the people, by the people. Don't be your own leader. Don't don't even like don't allow yourself to be appointed. Come through your constituencies. All right. So we call upon all of the leaders of South Sudan, civil societies, government oppositions, non-governmental, the youth, women, children, and the people of South Sudan to participate in the making of the new constitution that will govern our country. It's very important that all of our voices are represented ref, ref, uh, and also reflected in the permanent constitution. This is really important. All right. So as a, as, a, as a citizen by birth, I have every right to ensure that our constitution is being defended. So un, again, under Article 46, we need to ensure that the constitution is not being violated or defile by the members of parliament, the executive, and also the judiciary. This is really, really important. So please, if you would want to add one or two things, um, I will invite you. Um, I don't want to believe that I'm wasting my time. I'm not. I'm not wasting my time at all. Some people may actually even think right now that, oh, why are you interested? Like I said before, I'm protected by Article 46. Very important. I have 99% of my family members living in that country, constantly having to battle with insecurity because of poor leadership. Who do you think it affects? It affects me. It affects you. It affects everyone. All of my members, family members are back home. And I have every right to ensure that they're protected. And who gets to do that? It's the constitution. And if people are not acting based on the constitution, it becomes an issue. So thank you very much to people that took their time to watch the show um, and to people that also contributed um, in terms of commenting. Your, your comments are all um, welcome. Uh, I don't think I'm wasting my time and knowledge. I, I don't want to believe that because um, being quiet is not going to help either. So if you're quiet and you're also wasting your knowledge, it's better for you to speak up and then if it goes to waste, it goes to waste. 
people that will listen will listen. So it's definitely not a waste of time. And like I said before, it's not opinion either. It's based on facts. And if you want to check your facts and if you want to cross-check your facts, I am, I am open to emailing you the constitution. You don't just find it on a website. It's shared. It has to be shared. So I can't just give you the link. So send me your email if you're interested because I want a lot of our people to be educated to understand the constitution. If you know the constitution, you don't even have to be a lawyer. If you know the constitution and if you understand the constitution, trust me, no one can fool you. All these government bodies, you can hold them like this very tightly. You can. And most importantly, this is going to our leaders. This is going to our leaders. Please give our country a chance to grow. Let's not be greedy. Let's not be selfish. We didn't get the freedom and the right to have our own um, sovereign state in order for us to accumulate wealth. What about the health of the population? What about the people of South Sudan? Are you putting them into consideration? Everyone is crying. Everyone is relying on you. We want your protection. We trust you. If you are unable to do the job, give someone else a go. Someone that would want to lead the country in the right, the right direction. Like I said before, I personally as a book, I have no interest whatsoever in any position. So I'm not sitting here representing any political um, affiliation. I'm not affiliated with any political party at all. I'm just an independent individual that is concerned about the affairs of our country. And that's the reason why I have a chance to speak my mind and to point out where things are going wrong. If I had a political affiliation, I would have not had the freedom to come here and express myself freely. So it's important that you, even if you have a political affiliation, it's better for you to come through your people rather th than through dodgy way of trying to make yourself through um, to the top level. As we have all seen, this senseless war that was fought for, for positions. Millions and millions of, of innocent lives. It needs to stop. I am calling upon you, the people of South Sudan, to educate every single person that you come across about the constitution. They need to know their rights. You have a duty. These are your duties. These are your duties, yeah, Janubin. Duties of the citizen. I'm going to read it one more time. It shall be the duty of every citizen to uphold and abide by this constitution and respect the laws of South Sudan. You need to respect the law. And you need to hold these leaders accountable for their actions. It's very important. Every citizen shall in particular you... Defend the country and respond to the call for national service in accordance with the provisions of this constitution and the law. What are you doing right now when there's no roads? When there are no hospitals? What are you doing as a citizen? What are you doing? This is what the constitution is saying. It's your right to call for services. You need to avoid violence and promote harmony, unity, fraternity, and tolerance amongst all people of South Sudan in order to trans, uh, transcend ethnic, religious, geographical, and political divisions. So you as a citizen, you need to ensure that whatever you do, do it in a non-violent way. And we need to respect ourselves. You don't have to be violent in order for you to get what you deserve. You can, you can do things in a peaceful manner. I understand there's intimidation. I get it. 
I understand that the people in power will intimidate you and try to silence you. But if we do it collectively, without tribes, without religion, without anything interfering, just you, human, human rights, basic human rights, we can do more, we can do better than that. We can. And the constitution says this is your duty. It is your duty. It's your duty to preserve and protect public funds and assets and respect legal and financial obligations. When you cry up corruption, what is your duty? What are you doing to stop it? Are you questioning the members of parliaments? How do they come into power? You need to question them. It's your duty. It's your duty to prevent and combat corruption and sabotage. Constitution says that. I'm not saying this. It's the constitution of South Sudan. Participate in the development of South Sudan. This is exactly what we're doing here 24-7 on Facebook. Sharing ideas. Though people see us as crazy people or useless people. By the way, we're not useless. We have jobs. Like I said before, why would anyone want to leave a job where you're, you're paid almost like what? $5,000 to go and get paid $100 a month. If someone does that, respect them. It's because they want to work towards the development of the country. That's their duty. They're willing to sacrifice their family time. They're willing to sacrifice everything that they have to go and serve you. So have, you ha have high respect for people like that. Take part in general election and referenda as stipulated in this constitution and the law. So you as a... As a as a citizen, you need to call for election. It's your right. If the term is finished, you need to demand for an election to be done. It is your duty. And you're protected under Article 46. Protect the environment and conserve natural resources. Listen very carefully. What's happening with our natural resources at the moment? They're being used exploit it inappropriately and you're not benefiting from it it's your right to ensure that you sustain the environment that you live in look at what's happening right now in ruang state with um the, the the pollution the oil spill it's your right it's your duty to speak against these things you need to promote democracy good governance and the rule of law and respect the rights and freedoms of others we all need to respect ourselves irregardless of our differences your tribe whether you're dinka nwere kotorian it shouldn't really matter these this constitution here should be governing governing us look at other countries if you live in western world look at australia we're not even from one, the same country. We're from different countries across the world. We speak different languages. It's a highly multicultural society. And if they can actually develop their country and maintain peace and harmony, why can we not do it? And we're South Sudanese. What is stopping us? Why do we allow a, a tri tribalized mindset to push for greedy leaders to continue to use our population for the wrong reasons, for their own gain. Who's benefiting? Look at the war of 2013, 2016. Who's benefiting from that? Tell me. Are you beneficiaries? Put yourself first. This constitution here has a lot of things that are very important. And if it was, again, I'm calling upon our leaders to involve the people of South Sudan. I want this constitution to be translated into different languages so that people that are literate will be able to read this constitution. We need to teach it to the population so they know what their duties are. So we can hold our leaders accountable. Very important. You need to protect the environment. This is very important. You need to be guided and informed in all actions by the interests of the nation and the principles enshrined in this constitution. So keep this in mind. Keep this in mind. Like I said before, um, I'm not 
here to attack the president of uh, South Sudan. I'm just trying to outline what the constitution is doing and the contradictions within the constitution. It's not Kir Mayhadi, that's the problem. It's the members of parliament. And how, what, why are members of parliament, why are they powerless? It's because the constitution gives Kir Mayhadi again to elect. To, I mean, not to elect, sorry, that's not the right to appoint, you know, people within the upper house. And that's not right. So we really need to change this constitution. We need to change this constitution for the betterment of South Sudan. And like I said before, Kirmi is not going to be the, the president for forever. We will have other leaders as well that will come in the future. And if this constitution exists, if these inconsistencies, contradictions and injustices that are embedded within constitu this constitution, if they exist, and then the, the upcoming leader will do exactly the same thing. Like what uh, the executives are doing right now, which is headed by the president. It will continue along the line. So I'm talking about the future. We're trying to protect our future and the future of our children in the next, next generation to come. So we really need to um, think very carefully. We really need to read the constitution. The people need to be allowed to contribute and change and make amendments within the constitution. Very important. No one should be appointing and dismissing anyone in power without consultation with the people. And if election was allowed, this would have not even present a problem. Because if I, if the people of Tweedmayadi state, it doesn't exist anymore, I'm just saying, if the people of Warab state, let's say if people of Warab state, if they were to elect a governor, okay, and if the governor comes across as incompetent, it is the same people that will come back and elect someone else that they believe will uphold their values. Every state should be independent. States can have their own parliament within the states. It happens. A states can do what? They can, um, you know, run their own parliaments. They can even pass their own law within the state. It happens in other countries. But we're not allowing the states. We're not giving them independence. We're interfering. Um, the executive is interfering too much um, with the states. The devolution of power is not being followed. So, like I said before, I have nothing to fear because a person that fears to speak the truth is a person that has an interest. I have no interest in any political party. I'm not going to South Sudan anytime soon anyways. So I'm just speaking my mind and I'm speaking what I believe majority of South Sudanese are also thinking right now, but no one is expressing it because people are afraid. If you go to South Sudan, you will be targeted. If you go, people are always in constant fear because fear is being instilled onto you. And it's not right. It's not right at all. We need to speak up. We need to have that freedom. And I, I am actually calling for all of our leaders in the opposition as well, because Believe it or not, majority of these oppositions are incompetent as well. They are as incompetent. Very incompetent. Because if they were competent, these issues that we're talking about right now, should have, these issues should have not been happening. So let's, uh, let's work for the development of our country. As we all know, we're very proud of being South Sudanese. Um, we got our independent... And, and as, a, as a result, we would want to continue to um, uphold, okay, and, and do what is right for our people. <laughs>